All these people are coming together because they want help the public learn the truth about the smart meters. They're being lied to by the power company. The power company is saying that they only pulse a few minutes a day and that they are idle most of the day. That's a lie. They're, what they're doing is they're adding up the micro pulses and they're misrepresenting the truth. They actually pulse a high powered RF pulse every few seconds. 10,000 to 190,000 times a day, and so you're being exposed constantly because that also radiates over your home wiring. Children are highly susceptible. Their skulls are thinner, and their brains absorb the radiation much deeper. So children are highly more susceptible, up to 100 times more than adults. So this is radiating into your home. If the child's bed is near that meter, it's extremely harmful. We have, people need to be aware of the truth about this, that these are highly exposing people to RF harm in their homes. That's only part of the story. They also are a serious fire danger. We've had multiple fires all over the country, and including here in Oregon, and the power company illegally pulls the meters off of the scene so they can't be investigated to see what really caused it. And they divert the public's attention to hot sockets and wiring. That's not the truth. The truth is these meters actually can and do overload and catch on fire internally. They have batteries in them, they have electronics, they're full-blown computers. And when the, when the power company and the PUC is trying to force a computer onto the side of your home with illegal opt-out fees, that should bring up huge red flags for people. The opt-out fees are illegal. The $137 fee is gone, we know that. But it was an illegal fee. It was for a so-called future expense, right? And that's illegal. $136 a month for your reader fee is absolutely illegal. And on your billing, it exists. It includes meter reading fees, right? It's more expensive. So now they're reducing their expenses by having less meters being read, and then they're falsely claiming they have to charge those who still have the old meters higher amounts, $36 a month. And that's actually double billing, and it's illegal. So now if someone gets that smart meter on their home because they felt bullied, and they didn't want to pay the opt-out fees, and then they start getting sick, and they're like, no, I want the less expensive digital meter on there, and I'll pay the $36 a month. They're going to charge you $169 up front extortion fee to put the less expensive meter on there. And then you're saying, well, wait a minute. Why didn't you charge people that wanted the smart meters $300 for that meter? But if I want the less expensive digital meter to get that RF transmitting meter off my house, now you're going to charge me $169 up front? It's mafia extortion tactics in the very beginning. And that's why they're bullying people. Josephine County is behind Jackson County. These people are here because they have a chance to opt out before they sneak these in on their home. So that we get great public exposure, and we get tens of thousands of people refusing to pay their fees, we can break their backs. But we're also going to sue the PUC. We're going to get Jackson County, Josephine County, they're already on our side on this. We're going to get all the counties in Oregon to stand up and go into a class action lawsuit, and we're going to reverse the illegal action of the PUC. They did not allow public hearings on this. They're still denying them. They will not have them. They're appointed by the governor, not by us. And so she can appoint people that, that serves her corporate interests. We have to take control with lawsuits and with protests nationwide. In California, they actually were able to win. They didn't allow opt-outs in California until they had lawsuits and public protests every single day until they broke their back. We're going for their throat. We're going to get it reversed completely. We're not looking for reduced opt-out fees. They're illegal. We want them gone completely. We want the analog meters put back on it, no cost. And right now, there are people in New Mexico, senators and representatives who are putting in bills exactly what I'm saying. They're fighting this all over the country. We're going to be the first state to reverse an action that was taken to put the smart meters on. In, in New Mexico and Kansas and in Kentucky, they allowed public input their PUC prior to making a decision, and so they said all the claims by the power company were false. It is not to the benefit of the public at all. They're supposed to protect our interests. Here in, Cal in Oregon, we have been cheated by a corrupt PUC. We have to take them to court. We have to win, and we have to get this reversed and get everybody to have a choice if they want to go back to an analog meter with no charge at all. Can you explain to me what a uh, PUC stands for? But the Public Utilities Commission, Oregon Public Utilities Commission, they oversee all the utilities, gas and electric, and they're supposed to be making judgments that are for the benefit of the people. We know now they're not listening to the people, and we have to fight for it. All right, we pretty much covered a lot, but I still have more questions. Go for it. One of them is uh, the question I asked before. Uh, I spoke with Pacific Power first, and they're saying that some of the information you guys might have. It's actually their information is false. We have electrical engineers who have examined the new meter, the Eclair meter. It was not properly tested. It's not been properly tested against surges. We know they've been catching on fire and exploding from surges, and they're hiding that by removing the fire seats that these are not surge protected properly. If you're going to put a meter on the side of your home that has a fire risk, you should have every assurance that that is totally properly safety tested. They're not. 
and they cannot be insured. Lloyd's of London will not insure these meters. So they provide no insurance to your home. If that catches on fire and burns your house down, they have zero liability. So if they're trying to force a meter on the side of your home that has fire risk and health risk, and you say no, and they're going to use extortion fees, to, to, if you don't do it, that's got to be something people even really the light, the red light should be coming on and saying there's something wrong. When we were thinking about 150 people came about this. Time. It looks like we got about 150. We had about 60 at the Medford protest, and we've got a large number here. So we're growing. That's the point. We need tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people to get together on this and to see that they're being lied to and extorted and to stand up and say no. That's what it's going to take to win this. Is everybody, all the counties, all the people coming together in lawsuits and taking and protests. You have to protest and protest and protest to make your voices heard. So we've got a few, I know I saw Lily Morgan here, the Supreme County Commissioner. Yes, she's, she's guiding us, yes. And then I believe that's Ron Smith, a potential? Yes, yes, he's running for council. So what's that like? Uh, have you been talking with them at all? I met with jo Josephine County uh, commissioners on Wednesday. They had a public, um, where they lost the public to speak on this. We had a large number of local residents speaking. They were very intelligent and well-spoken. And the commissioners are expressing their support for the public on this. They, they want us to understand how those commissioners were appointed, and that's how we can change things by our vote. They also want us to understand the process that works the most effectively, and it is, Lily was recommending, it is the lawsuits that are the effective means about meeting this. The counties have no power to say no. They can file papers, they can object, but they can sue with us. But they can't just say no. That power was taken away from them. We want to get that back, by the way, as far as separation of powers. The commissioners are very supportive now. They've been given the factual information. They know the truth, and they're supporting us. So are the Jackson County commissioners. And just got a letter. I saw a letter today. I have it on me, where the Grants Pass City Council has now been educated about the lies they were told, and they're now writing the DC power and refuting their illegal fees also. So we're gaining support with our political appointees and the people that we uh, work with in our counties and cities, and it's actually getting stronger every day. How does it feel to have just many people come to this event and yeah, we talked to some people who might be trying to get that Right, people from the public that are coming here need someone to talk to to show them the other side and expose the lies they consider the power. So this feels wonderful to see these people educating themselves and sharing that love and that concern with their neighbors and helping more people to avoid harm. Right now, people need to opt out right now to prevent harm to their families and we will fight the fees. I know it's hard to ship for many people, but if your bill doubles after you get that computerized meter, you're going to be sorry you didn't opt out and save that analog meter. But it's mostly about protecting your family, your children, those that are elderly or are you know, or highly susceptible to these RF pulses. So this loving event of people coming together, it really does touch my heart. So what do you say to the people who think that you guys are protesting this situation? Well, you know how things got changed throughout history. People stood up. In Italy, they had tens, hundreds of thousands on the streets day after day. They broke the, back's government, the government's back on forcing vaccines on their children. They got it reversed. Any time in history when something great happened, it took people on the streets in large numbers protesting. Not violent protesting, peaceful protesting. Using your First Amendment right, we've been threatened with arrest now in Jackson County and here again today because the people who run the fairs are being mean and trying to get us arrested if we don't go to their free speech zones, and we're not going to do that. Our free speech in America, our First Amendment rights, are wherever I'm standing. I have the right to express that, including holding up the sign. There could be meetings and interior places where that would be disrupted, but on public places like sidewalks and parks, when I'm standing next to my car legally parked, they're going to arrest me if I hold up a sign? That's not going to happen. We're all telling them no. Nobody got arrested. But we're facing that. We're willing to face that, but peacefully. We don't need violent people coming in and starting trouble. These are peaceful, loving people that want their voices heard. And this is the only way we're going to make change in this country. If we stand up and make our voices heard, stand up together. Anything that I haven't asked you that you can say? Just that, you know, really this is about reaching out to the people in our community to help them see they've been lied to and to help them protect their families and to understand that this is a health risk for their family. It does provide also a lot of privacy invasion risk, we understand that, but mostly it's the health issues we're focusing on now. To be extorted, if you won't do what they say, is ridiculous. We have to fight this.